everybody welcome back to D, D 404 i am your dm tony and join with me today are the other three leftovers in my fridge fellas why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself starting with the crunchy tasty jerry armos van and checking in um you know i'm more of a uh you know leftover spaghetti it's my favorite Ooh. i love it had it today it was delicious yo leftover spaghetti slaps low key. okay but the question is is it do you eat it hot or cold Oh, hot. Oh, Warm no, it up. Dude, that's gross. No, the... cold. Oh. I was going to say spaghetti, but cold spaghetti is the greatest thing cold. in the world. So. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. Never heard of cold spaghetti. Whoa. Cold spaghetti. <laughs> cold spaghetti hits, bro. I'll have to try Listen, it. I have a living example of what a somebody who eats cold spaghetti. Uh, maybe that's not the best example. My However, name's Dan, and I play <laughs> Minis Pebble Walker of the Ivory Boulders, tiny little Swarm Keeper Ranger, and my favorite leftovers. Uh, buying for time. Uh, let me look at my watch. What time is it? Is uh, Domino's. Oh, I fucking hate you so much. Mm. <laughs> I fucking hate you so much. I couldn't think of anything, oh, so I just so threw much. that one out there. <laughs> Domino's. So, leftover pizza. Yeah, yeah, leftover pizza. And I'm Alec. I play Drill the Ashbourne, and I am... Uh, leftover like Thanksgiving stuffing, bro. Cause stuffing Ooh. cold, I eat the I eat that shit too. I'm a cold leftovers person. I don't believe in reheating shit. I'll just eat it cold. I mean, you, all you have to do is cook it once. All you have to do is cook it once. Exactly. All right. Welcome back. And just real quick, Alec is remote today. He is not at his normal setup. So if he sounds a little bit different this session, well, then now you yeah. know why. Now you know why. He brought his whole computer to a whole different spot. Just for you guys. Dedicated. Yes, sir. And you know the deal. Before we give you the recap, we got to give you the rundown. Now, boys, I'll take I'll take the rundown this time. All right. Oh, oh that's and tough. I'm not going to shout anything out this week. I'm not shouting anything out. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk to a specific group of people. That's right. I am. I am talking to you, guy in the car, listening to us every week, giving you this sense of normalcy and routine as you drive into work or to the supermarket or to the gym or to your gram gram's house every week and you listen and you enjoy the content but you don't follow us on any of the social medias you don't interact with us in the discord you don't talk to us go ahead and give uh social medias a like i'm talking to you guy who just casually listens to us and is a silent listener go ahead and say hi to us i'm talking to you let's go ahead into the recap <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> in our last session, the Bloodshard Bandits are on the road again, with Lord Baron's Divider being their destination. The goal of their journey is to deliver a large bag of Bloodshards to Lord Baron and the Sigi College. One morning on their travels, Drell awakes in a pile of trash next to a food caravan. The food caravan belongs to Novo, a brass dragonborn, a magical chef, and Novo quests our adventurers to hunt down a wyvern in a nearby area. The hero accept and head into the woods to find the wyvern and discover a destroyed campsite. While investigating, the heroes were ambushed by wolves, but something was off. These wolves were corrupted and undead, a mutated reflection of their former selves. And we pick up today's session with a short rest. Bard, play that intro and let's get on with the show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the world of Humbrea, featuring three first-time adventurers and one very patient DM. This is D&D 404. You guys are finishing up a short rest nearby the Shredded Camp where you just uh, slain these wolves. Now, you guys are, as you guys are catching your breath, uh, Armos, you get your spell slots back, and Drell, you know, takes a deep breath, maybe you guys are eating some food. So the wolves that you guys just fought, as you guys take a short rest and examine them, they slowly evaporate from, like, after they are slain and they hit the ground, they slowly started dusting away. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to be great meat for Nova. Oh, come on. No, 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 come back. Come back. He's, like, reaching in the air. No, no, I need the meat. I need to prove me or no wrong. <laughs> now, Minus, being one with nature, you know that these were wolves, and you know about dire wolves. Drill, you knew what they were right off the bat, but these yep. were even slightly bigger or their appearance was altered in some way. They looked corrupted. They were, they looked diseased right out the gate. Like they had bones sticking out, blood drooling, their skin was shredded apart. Like 
you would think that they rose from the dead after dealing with what you dealt, dealt with in Dillmore. Same thing. However, almost you remember Reginald saying that he recognized something, uh, a feeling, a presence right before you got ambushed. Is there anything you want to do at the camp before you head towards the beast? I don't think so on Drell's side. I mean, Minus is just uh, getting his cart from where he left it. He's also uh, eating some food, you know, next to Drell, you know, hyping Drell. Oh, Drell. Uh, that was one of the best fights I think you've ever had, by the way. Yeah, Minus, wasn't it so fun? Ah. Did you have a great time? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was, I was, I was feeling really <laughs> healthy a, during that such one, Such a dude. good workout. Yeah, that was uh, my glutes. Uh, I was, did you see me tightening my glutes the whole I time? I did. I yep. did. Yeah, yeah. I was tightening them very hard. <laughs> hey, you want some of this cheese before I finish it? <laughs> Armos is behind them, looking puzzled, like that they're staring at each other's glutes, <laughs> just showing them off. <laughs> wait, wait. Did, did you mean uh, I was trying? I was trying that workout you're talking about, like this. <laughs> Like that? I think Armos is all good. Pretty beat up, but ready to press on. Everybody give me a perception check as you're packing your things up and getting ready to set out. Uh, let me know who gets the highest number. I got a four. I think I got a 12. Oh, six. Yeah, so 12. Okay. Menace, as you're getting your things ready, you get your car and, you know, you're checking out these wolves. As you go take the last sweep of an area right before you guys set out, you check out the tent and there's the dead dwarf in there. So you like check out his pockets to see if he has anything or to see who he was. And you start to hear some heavy breathing coming from the body. Some what kind of breathing? <gasps> heavy breathing. Oh, what? <laughs> And his face is not towards you. It's like he's on his side facing away from you. Guys, guys, get in here quick. And he runs over and uh, kind of turns the guy over. I'm fully ready to cast Eldric Blast on this thing. <laughs> when you turn him over, so Armos and Drell are on their way when this next bit happens. Menace, when you go to turn him over... He like lunges at you and grabs your shoulders. His hand is skeletal and his half of his face is like melted off. He's like, heavy, heavy, toxic clouds. He like brings you close and his breath reeks and like a little bit of green pus and smoke comes out of his mouth and you start coughing from it. And he's like, the clouds, the clouds walked among us. He stole us for a very breath. <coughs> you close your eyes and you start to like, you drop them instantly and you close your and rub your eyes. And when you come to, it's like his body has never moved. Whatever you experience, you feel like you just had the weirdest hallucination. Uh, Sid, did you see that? Was that real? Me? Sid looks at you puzzled. The clouds walk among us. What does that mean, Sid? You're magic. You know, ma you know, you know magic stuff, right? Me? And he just like walks in place like he's marching. Huh. Do these guys like come in right after that or? They come in. Yeah, they come in and you just see them. They catch you coughing and like rubbing your eyes and opening them up. <coughs> oh, guys, uh, this uh, dwarf here kind of woke up for a second. He was coughing and talking about uh, toxic clouds walking among us. Uh, anybody, anybody got uh, an idea what that might mean? Wait, who was talking? This guy. And I point to the dwarf. The dead guy? Well, he wasn't dead a second ago. Hmm. Right, Sid? <laughs> looks, at it again. Oh, it looks at you confused. The clouds walk among us. I look at uh, Reginald. Oh, <laughs> what's a cloud, dude? I don't know. Oh my God! Come here, Reginald. I pick him up. All right. Well, uh, Menace is officially crazy. I pick Reginald up and point him at the clouds outside. That the white things in the sky. He's like squinting. He goes, "Why is it so bright?" Look! Look! Do you see that white thing that looks kind of like a, a bunny? What? Well, no, not you, not you. Oh, oh, sorry, oh, that was a bad oh, example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, he's Reginald's like, uh, weirdo, <laughs> put me down. Guys, I swear, it, it, this guy just, he was coughing and stuff. He, he, he talked about toxic stuff. I, I don't know what it meant, but uh, we should maybe be careful. I don't know. I'm not crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Drell kind of just looks at almost right, and is uh huh. The clouds. Yo, someone's had a little too much uh, pre-workout. Okay, we gotta we gotta get moving. No, actually, I'm Natty. Drell told me Natty is the way to go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, totally. And he like hides free workout in his back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's uh, let's move on, I guess. So you shake yourself off, Minus, and that was truly a weird moment. Um, unlike you've experienced before to drill and almost the body looks untouched. Doesn't even look like Minus even approached the body. It looks exactly how you found it. So you guys gather your things and you begin to head northeastish as you were following the flight path of this beast. You walk about for another half hour and you notice that it is oddly quiet for the middle of the day. There's no birds. You don't hear any like bugs or anything like that. You might hear the occasional cricket or so, but it's ominously quieter than how woods should sound or the outside should sound especially during the middle of the day and menace this offsets you a little bit being that you would know the woods better than anyone else here is it kind of like when we went to the temple and it was getting worse and worse or is it a different kind of thing so no it's not being decayed but the closer you walk to the path you are following some of these scattered out giant prints in the ground the trees start to not look decayed, but you can tell that some of the leaves are looking darker greenish blue rather than from the lush green from the woods around you during summertime. They don't look dead, but it looks tainted. There are also random patches of grass. The closer you get to your destination, the more common these uh, patches of grass that are dark green and dark blue. Can I do like a... Uh like a nature check or like a survival check to see if I like recognize like what would call like what would um make this happen yeah go ahead make me a nature check oh so like not survival <laughs> whatever is your better stat because I would say it goes into both of this let's go survival for sure okay go for survival baby. <laughs> oh my god but I rolled worse dude are you fucking kidding me <laughs> uh, that's a nine that's a nine you don't get too much it's just with the nine, you know that the color, the discoloration of the grass is from a third party. It is not naturally discoloring, like dying grass or anything like that. You know, with a nine, don't eat that. Its pH value is off. That's what I've learned recently oh, while pH having value. a yard. The pH value <laughs> of your lawn. When it goes off, it dies. Fun fact. So you guys are on the right path, but you don't know if the beast made any turns or anything like that. And now these footprints are starting to get less and less common as you are walking down the, as you are walking through the woods. So you guys are gonna make me a nature or survival check. Uh, and you guys are trying to hit a certain DC. And the longer it takes for you to hit that DC uh, is more time has passed in the day. Okay. Huh. Minus got a 16. Armos got a natural one, but I have plus two, so it's a three. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Drell, what did you get? I got an eight. Okay, everyone re-roll again as some more time passes. Ooh, there we go. 18. Whoop, whoop. 13. 14. Ooh, no, that was, that's a lot better. So about an hour, hour and a half passes, and it's now uh, around 5 p.m., 6 p.m. It's about dinner time. You spend some time walking through the woods, trying to follow these trails of mismatched grass and footprints you know the thing flies so it probably doesn't walk very often and you start to know when you're getting closer because some of the trees have been blown out of the way as if something large went past maybe flew low to the ground past them as you walk you start to see more of this discolored grass and now it's becoming more consistent with the landscape and you start to follow it Another 15 minutes or so pass, and you see a cave entrance shrouded by trees. And the mouth of the cave is shrouded in darkness, but very wide. It could fit something quite large. There are scratch marks leading into the cave, like heavy footprints are scraping and landing here and then walking in. And it's completely covered with trees. Now, the trees also match the same coloration as the grass around it, where it looks like it was uh, affected by something. 
So you guys can see into the cave just a little bit. There's one thing I've learned in all of our adventures is that I'm not first going in there. <laughs> what are you talking about? When you were last, you got bitten by a grandma. Yeah, you literally see in the dark, you have to go in first. <laughs> right? Uh, I was going to say, and then I had the the waterfall event. Uh, <laughs> why am I out so far ahead? <laughs> What's going on here? You know what? I think Tony just like doesn't care about the order and just wants to bully you, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, why does all the stuff happen to Armos first? <laughs> so honestly, sometimes I literally just go, Oh, it happened to the first person that walked in. So I'm going to do it to the last person that walked in. And he just like, hey, I'm not going to get out of this. I'm not going to get got this time. And he just puts himself in that position. And it's like, okay. <laughs> How do you three want to proceed? All right, Armos, you're up. <laughs> Drell. <laughs> hey, uh, Drell, could I see your axe real quick? No. <laughs> Trust me, I want to try something, uh, uh, something new. I've been, I've been dying to try this. Mm. And he kind of picks his feather out of his uh, mohawk. He's like, trust me, it's going to be awesome. Okay, fine. And I hand him the bladed side first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't need to hold it or anything. Just keep it there. All right. Uh, Melora, Melora, uh, d uh, g g time for some flora i don't know i'm new to this bing and he taps the feather to the axe and casts light oh uh you touch one object that is no larger than 10 feet in any dimension until the spell ends the object sheds bright light in 20 foot radius and dim light an additional 20 feet the light can be colored as you like hey drill what color do you want mm. shout out a color maroon Maroon. maroon. <laughs> it's shedding maroon light maroon. from your axe in the radius specified. So now you got uh, basically a torch, <laughs> but your axe is glowing. Oh. Guess who's first? I mean, is that a cantrip or something? What is it? It is. Yeah, it's a new cleric cantrip I got. Nice. So we don't have to like use torches or like worry about holding torches, you know? Oh, would you look at that? And so because they are emitting light almost, your night vision does not kick in. You know, this is some bullshit. I squint as I hiss. You want to go first or? No, it's fine. <laughs> Just love my dark vision. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And his eye, Reginald's eyes turn red for a sec. He goes, I got cool vision. And then it comes off. Yeah, but it's not as cool as this. And I'm like spinning my sword or my ax like around me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Armos, uh, I don't know why you're always the one getting hit with stuff, but how about you go in the middle this time? Hear me out. What if I cast darkness on myself and I walk up in there? Oh, do it. Yeah, we'll be right behind you. And then that way, it, I'm complete darkness and I can see out, but they can't see me. I don't know. Joe, what do you want to do? You want to go first? Yeah, as long as you don't do that darkness thing. Okay, okay, okay. You go. <laughs> All right, and Drill walks in first. So you guys are now walking into the entrance of the cave. The grass slowly turns into dirt like a cave floor, and you notice scratch marks as you walk in. You guys could walk in a little further. So as you guys continue down the entrance of the tunnel, it forks out and you are presented with two separate paths, left and right. Hmm. You can see that the cave walls have a lot of foliage sticking out of them in between the rocks. And as you approach this fork, that's when the foliage treads off and now it becomes full cave. It looks like it splits up here. You guys want to stick together or split up? I think Drell and I take the left. Armos, you take the right, okay? Uh, <laughs> that, does make, that does make complete sense because he can see in the dark. Yeah. We can't, it, so. You know? <laughs> So why not, you know, we should have the two people with lights go one way and then the guy who wants to cast himself in darkness go the other way. You know, I'm 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 for it. I'm for it. All right. And if you need help, just yell Oklahoma really loud, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what does that word mean? Uh, I don't know. I just made it up. Is oh, it's oh, not a magical spell. It's a oh. cool word. Oklahoma. Mm. All right, and weird word. Drell and Minus go to the left. 
where the masters are splitting up so you guys are splitting up everybody Ooh. listening to our podcast is like not again this is a scooby-doo adventure all over okay almost do you want to go first or should minis and drill go first so i give minis and drill a little bit of time just in case i have to run over there and save them and not because i'm scared <laughs> about going down the side right. by myself <laughs> totally just to make sure that they're okay so i let their little light dim a little further before i go down my side oh yeah because you need dark vision 120. don't you have demon sight i have demon sight i got dark vision and I got what it all, bro. color is that what color do you still see in shades of gray i see normally in darkness both magical and non-magical up to 120 feet so i see crystal clear darkness does not phase me cool i am the darkness i am the darkness okay minutes drell you guys take the left path and as you walk down you instantly notice that your path is very scraped up on the floor and it opens up into a the cavern from what you can see opens up to a larger room there are bones on the floor scattered in your path there's bones all over the place can I see what kind of bones there are? Yeah, go ahead and make me an investigation check. Okay, okay. It's a nine. This is pretty low. The bar is pretty low on this one. You know that these are kobold bones. Matter of fact, there is a skull on the floor that is a dead giveaway. As you guys are investigating these bones, you hear some bones moving kind of like rhythmically to your left along the cave wall in one of the dark pockets. Oh God. Jazz skeletons. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> Can I check to see if the kobold is Ghibli? No, you wouldn't be able to determine that. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god, they got him. They finally got him, Minus. Uh, Dro, Ghibli's a Koato. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> is Drell like holding the bones? They got him. <laughs> they got him. Um, okay. So does it look like they're piled up or are they just like they scattered, are scattered all? Scattered. Okay. And we just see them, right? We don't see any like weapons or anything like laying within the bones. You don't. You do hear the tapping of bones in the corner of one of the dark pockets not far from you and that is a pile of bones uh i would like to walk over to that pile of bones yeah i want to go investigate the noise sure you walk over to this pile of bones and he seemed to be rumbling and you hear a muffled voice coming from beneath the pile okay drell i might be crazy but you hear that right hear what Oh, God, Sid, I'm going crazy. <laughs> oh, no, you mean the noise coming from the bones? Yeah, no, I definitely heard oh. that. Oh, my God, don't do that to me, Drell. I just thought you thought something else. Nope, nope, definitely that right there. <laughs> is it under the bones? Or do I have it to, like, lift under up bones? the bones, yeah. I do that very carefully. As you move and shift through the bones, you hear... Blah, 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 and this skull pops out. And it's attached to like a top half of a torso. And he's like leaning up against the back of the wall. And you see the top half of a skeleton of a kobold, of a skeleton of a kobold. You know, you think for a sack of bones, I want to be able to breathe. I wouldn't need to breathe, but uh, here I am. Ow, look at this. We got some visitors here. Uh, okay, Drell, now I know I'm going crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, sweet darkness. I missed it. It was just bones before, but now I see darkness. And he's just a normal skeleton. Well, a kobold skeleton. Uh, do you have a a, a, a name? Uh, my name. My name? Yeah, my name's Jobolt. Oh. Jobolt the kobold. Yep. <laughs> and, he goes, well, and he starts nodding it's... vigorously. And it's like his head <laughs> is very loose. It's pretty original. Oh, thanks, my mother. My mother, Fobold, married my th my daddy, Dobold. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah. I could tell she really thought really hard about your name. Yeah, well, I didn't call me Junior when I was home, but you know now, you know, people, my, my friends call me Jobold. How can I help you? What are you doing in my my home, Jobold? I don't mean to alarm you, but you're you're just a skeleton. Ah, ah! He looks. Jobold looks down and goes, "Whoa, 
Yeah, I knew that. Wait, dude, how? 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 What is happening? <laughs> how is this possible? How are you speaking to me right now? Wow, how are you speaking to me right now? It's called the diaphragm. And when you speak through the diaphragm, you know, mixed with oxygen and voice cords. I can and clearly cords. see through your rib cage. You do not have a diaphragm. Oh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird, Look, huh? And I don't know how to draw diagrams or whatever you're saying, but <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I live in a cave and the cave keeps me going. So is this like a magic cave? How are you alive? Ah, uh, as you can see, I am not alive. You know what I mean? How are you uh, uh, the way you are? Uh, how are the, the way any of us are? Okay, I'm gonna go back into the cave and I start putting the bones back on top of him. Yeah, Drill starts stomping and crushing every single bone that's around him. Oh, come on, that was just my mother, you crushing it, it's my sister. And as you start to bury him back down, he, his voice gets muffled again. So, uh, moving on? Well, I mean, like, I don't know, do we want to see how long this guy's been fucking living here? Oh, yeah, and I pull the one, like, bone that I stuck in his mouth to stop him from talking. I pull it out, like, hey, uh, so you said this is your, what, your home? Is there, like, yeah. is there a wyvern in here? Oh, uh, what, what is a wyvern? It's like a beast, it's like a dragon kind of, kind of beast. I would argue that wyverns are not dragons, and if you asked a dragon, uh, he would probably be really mad that you called him a wyvern. But is there one in here? Is there what? A wyvern? Yes. No. Oh. What is in here? Is there anything like, like what? He says it's your home. What, like, is, do you have a, uh, a, a cold box? Do you have a, a race car bed? Like, what's the deal? Uh, when I had skin, I used to have a race car bed, but you know, my family lives in here. Oh, and are they all like you? Uh, yeah, alive though. But I thought you said I just stepped on other bones. Uh, I mean, I have extended family. I got cousins. I got second cousins. I got third cousins. I got an uncle. I got How a How did you turn it into a skeleton? Uh, well, as you pass on, your body decomposes and you become one with the earth and you become nutrients and what's left behind are the bones and the magic. So this cave keeps you animated. I mean, I am not a cartoon, sir. What's, what's a cartoon? Okay, wait. So, okay. <laughs> if, you, if you say you're not alive... Then what the fuck do you think you are? Oh, you know, if I was to take you out of this cave, would you stop talking? That's a good question. I haven't left the cave. In All right, let's try it out. And I fucking grab him and I fucking try to bring him out of the cave. <laughs> yeah, we walk back out. <laughs> As I hear people walking because I haven't gone down my side yet, I, I duck down the down the side. <laughs> <laughs> to pretend that you went. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ornos, what are you doing? You guys, just wait, here? wait, you guys walk out. As you guys are now walking out, Armos hears you guys come in and pretends to walk down further into his uh, pathway. Armos, as you walk down, you just like you just move in there, right? Yeah, I'm trying to keep keep like you know just get some distance between them coming back. Can you do me a favor? Oh God, roll me a Constitution saving throw for me. Mm. What? You sure it's not a charisma saving throw? Oh, I'm positive it's constitution. <laughs> oh, damn it. Six. Awesome. Almost as you were waiting to see what happens to your friends down the left path, you decided to take the right path. And as they walk down, you start to continue down yours. The floor was hollow or shallow, and you fall and your foot gets stuck in a manhole. The manhole is filled with wasps. The buzzing erupts from the ground and all these big wasps start swarming around you and start getting panicky and start stinging you. You're gonna take 12d4 piercing damage. What? <laughs> Excuse me? 12d4. You take 31 points of damage as these wasps swarm you and start stinging you and Reginald all over, and you are now poisoned as your legs and some of your arms start to swell up in all these bumps and hives. Okay, well, I almost died. <laughs> no, horribly. is he down? <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. He only has 34 life. <laughs> what the fuck? You only have 34 life? What? Yeah, that's my max life. Oh, wait. Oh, because we got minus five from that last thing. I actually have 40, 
45. You take 31 points of damage as these wasps get freaked out as you trigger the trap and get swarmed all over. Reginald getting stung as you drop, he drops. Minus and Drell, as you guys are walking out of the cave, you hear, ah, and Carmel <laughs> and all these bees are going and start to swarm. And you guys can see the bees stinging Armos and then dispersing as he drops. I think he's fine. He didn't say the safe word, so <laughs> I think he'll be okay. We should keep oh, going. Is that Armos? Oh, uh, hey, take the skeleton outside. I'll go check on him, okay? Oh, okay. I, I'm telling you, I think he's fine. He didn't say the safe word, but I mean, yeah, go check on him. Oh, it's true. He didn't say Oklahoma. Does he yell Oklahoma right as he's getting stung? <laughs> Does he have chance to at least say that? <laughs> what are your sh What are your last words as you go down? Oh my god! <laughs> Not <fuck>? again! <laughs> no, see, so yeah, again. he didn't say it. I think I think we're good. <laughs> but just to be safe, you should go ch check on him. All right, all right. You go take that skeleton outside. I'll I'll go see if Armos is okay. <laughs> and I walk towards Armos. You see, as that happens, Joel Bold starts laughing in your hand, Cheryl. He goes, <laughs> Ah, the old bee trap. <laughs> the old bee trap. Trap. Wait. Wait you. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, my God. Are there traps in this cave? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming, Armos. <laughs> you go up to Armos. Stro, what are you doing? I just, uh, just want to make sure what your actions are. I ripped uh, when he was laughing about the bee thing. I uh, ripped his foot off and threw it back in the cave, and I walked out with the rest of them. Okay. <laughs> Drell, as you walk outside of the cave, you hear Joel Bold laughing. And he's like, ha, 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 bees. And the second he leaves the cave, he unanimates and his mouth is just a jar opened a jar so he was animated i knew it no <laughs> um i guess i'll just leave him out here and then um i'll just prop him up against a wall and just walk back in because our theory was proven minis you see armos's body covered in stings wasp stings and welts oh armos armos what happened armos and I'm pushing him. <laughs> Armos is down. Armos, <laughs> you are back at the well in that, in your pocket realm of Bayloon, where you saw many moons ago, where you saw the blood well. You see, you're you stuck up on this high pedestal. The wind is rushing. The waves are crashing and everything looks like it's in discourse. So last time you were here, you were raising the bridge to Breloon in a shadow castle in the distance. This is some, yeah, yeah, yeah. last time you hear was a long time ago. And this is where you also got the tome. The oceans weren't crashing like they are now. It looks like there's a monsoon where you are. And you're here because you were down. You came back here and you saw Reginald's true form, like a silhouette of his true form here. And everything was chaotic. It is chaotic again. You know that when you went down from this trap, that the area that you're in is a reflection of how you feel in the when you're awake Ooh. so you know that you're not okay wherever your physical body is when you look out into the blood ocean high up on this pedestal you do see the same silhouette of reginald with the seven wings and he's just looking at you and his head is massive and it's just like your eye level with his massive head you're like, huh beast what a thunk Never again. I hate caves. Why'd you go down by yourself, man? You're always doing this. You're always getting us in these situations. <laughs> hey, you could have said something. I did. I just learned what a B was two seconds hey, ago. That's that's why you only got seven wings. Uh, that's the eighth one. Fair. We we don't have insects here. Man, you're missing out. That's like a great opportunity for you. Don't Honestly, you talk about that to your your Don't you do that to me, almost fat. Do not don't do that to me, almost. Oh. Oh, registering. Let me think about it. Bugs, oh. gnats, mosquitoes, spiders. You don't got a you don't got a spider in this place. Sounds metal. Look at this. You got uh you got whales. Out of all the creatures to bring over this way, you got a a, a skeletal whale. You leave Ben alone. <laughs> we gotta go back to Menace. <laughs> Menace, you are over Armos's body, covered in welts. What are you doing? 
Armos, I can't believe you died. I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you. And as I say that, my feather falls off. And I think I unintentionally <laughs> cast Spare the Dying. <laughs> That's a cantrip, right? Glowing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what does Spare the Dying do? I touch a creature with zero hit points and they go stable. <laughs> And then I see him like start to breathe again. I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God, you're okay. You're okay. Here, drink this, buddy. Drink this, buddy. And I feed him a health potion. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going on a tangent. There's spiders. I can't believe you don't have spiders. Right, like, so all all things that sounds creepy, dude. It's the thing with eight legs. What, what has eight of something besides wings? You wait until you see centipedes. Your mind's about to be what? And they're having this conversation as they get resurrected. <laughs> uh, so that was a weird one. Uh, wait, how much do I get healed for that? Uh, 2d4 plus 2. Minus, roll me a d20 when you cast Cure Wounds. That's still happening? Uh, nat 20. You get your spell slot back. <gasps> what? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> when you eat the puree, every time you cast a spell, you can roll a d20. On a 19 or a 20, you get your spell slot back. Ooh, let's go, free heals. <laughs> Drill. as mm -hmm. Minus is administering first aid, what are you doing? Um, I guess I'm kind of walking up and just looking over Minus as he's like, Hey, uh, so yeah, Minus, that uh, bag of bones stopped talking as soon as I walked out of the cave. Oh, hey, look, yeah, I guess Armos did need help. Uh, uh, it's weird, though. He didn't yell the safe word, so I don't know. <laughs> Wait, bones? What? You guys had talking bones? I had bees? Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. We had a cool conversation <laughs> with some guy that was just a skeleton, and then I took him out of the cave, and then, yeah, he stopped talking. I'm always going down the left path. I'm never taking the right path Drill. ever again. Almost, almost died. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, that was something. Man. I used my insect mage hands to, like, fuck up the other insect. I'm like, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Well. Well, uh, yeah, that Fobold guy told us there were lots of traps around. Oh, well, he clearly lied uh, <laughs> that there weren't traps, but. Wait, so he knew about the traps? I instantly go out, march, and try to find these bones. I go out, I grab him, bring him inside. He starts talking again. Cue the talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the devil oh. I want to hear from you. Hang on. Wow. And I throw him, I throw his little body. I, I kind of like, <laughs> I know that it's like one, but I take his body and I throw it aside and I just am talking to his head. Where are, is there any more traps? Ah. Be careful how you answer. No. I Eldritch Blast <laughs> the hell out of his head. And just blow it up. The head gets exploded as shrap of bone go flying everywhere. I take his little body and I throw it in the where the bees are. When he turn around, Minus has his uh, magnifying glass. I was like, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look for traps. Uh, yeah. All right. I hope you're good, Armos. <laughs> so, Minus, you want to go ahead and investigate for any traps along the right wall? Go ahead and give me an investigation check. That's a that's a nine. <laughs> you do not find any traps. All right, looks like we're good on this side, everybody. How are you feeling, Armos? You still hurting? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. Come here, buddy. I Bring think, it in. Uh, the words near near death. Bring it in. Come to mind. Give me a hug. I I reluctantly extend my hand and uh menace hugs my hand or my this arm weird. this is weird I'm not hugging your arm come here buddy how long have we been friends <laughs> oh god so he's hugging my leg now and i have my leg like picked up <laughs> you see the feather glow like a little brighter <laughs> as you get 12 health back oh my god oh, he healed you hey. yeah. from a cure wounds <laughs> he took cure <laughs> wounds interesting wow <laughs> love it oh my god all it took was a couple of bees um, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. What are you guys doing? Um, I'll say with your investigation check from earlier, as you were looking for traps, you notice that a few feet from the path you guys took, that it does, that both paths do connect to a much larger room. And in the center, you see this descending path between two ridges. And 
the path goes down in between these two cave walls and you see a body of water but the body of water is completely green it almost looks like acid you see bones at the bottom with some rock sticking up it's about 20 feet below the floor like 20 feet deep and then there's the water that goes down a couple more feet it's relatively shallow where the water is but the hole itself is about 20 is about a 20 foot drop you can like casually walk into it or you can look down into it from its sides and it looks like it stretches across you could also walk around it i was gonna say can i take some of the bones that are maybe around and put them in the the liquid to see if there's any kind of reaction to it sure you go ahead and you take one of the bones and you chuck it in and as you throw it in it goes bloop, and it slowly sinks to the bottom you see it hit the floor and nothing really happens hmm we might have to test this with the live subject and i look at uh reginald <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, wait 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 <laughs> no <laughs> i mean just jump in dude it's just water no no <laughs> it's like like at the boat no just do it dude that smells foul i thought you like the smell of like death and shit like that he has a point doesn't mean i want to be dead i look at armos and i like nod my head towards the water <laughs> I mean, this takes a leaf from his scrapbook, uh, just like one of the normal like maple leaves or something, and throws it in. The leaf goes and hits the water, instantly bubbles. Like the leaf starts to disintegrate as it sticks, as it floats to the bottom to its stem, and then the stem evaporates. Uh... I still think we should try it with Reginald. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just hear me out, but. All right, noted. Do not go in the dangerous water. So, which way are we going, guys? I'm gonna go around the right side. Let's go, guys. Uh, almost. Go ahead and move your token with the boys. You can't make me. Okay, I'm going. You can stay right there if you like. I see a dead body. What? Where? It's over there. And I point in the direction oh. of oh, the actually, dead body I see it too. that's laying on the <laughs> ground that I can see clear as day because I have devil's vision. As you continue down this path, you do see another cave path that forks to the right with a lot more scratch marks. And on your path to the left, that kind of hugs this icky pit of water. You do see a dead body next to some columns. And it looks like something a little more human. Confirmed, dead body over here. Is this one talking? I hope not. Wait, let me check. I go up to it. So <laughs> you guys walk up to this um, giant stalagmite that's poking out of the ground and it reaches like halfway. It's pretty, it goes pretty high. It's about 10, 15 feet tall. And you see about three bodies. Looks, looks like it's pretty recent that they died here. Maybe within the last couple of days, just from get from a quick, quick glance, you do see more bones around them and bones are kind of scattered around everywhere. And you hear some more bone jostling as you approach them. Oh no. Before moving on, I peek my head into the cave on the on our right. Okay. To see if there's like anything notable. The cave goes pretty deep, and as you follow the scratched path, it just goes into you can't really see past the darkness from where your light emits. Armos, we'll check out the bodies. Can you look down this hallway, see if there's anything interesting? It looks like a big uh, crevice. Just go down there and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Big ol' nopes. <laughs> so, Armos, when you look down the entryway of this tunnel, you can see a lot further than Minus can. I see everything. You see this path, and it cones outwards and expands into a larger room, but you see that there's about 80 feet from where you're standing, there is a large pit that goes down. Can I take... Uh, a rock and throw it in that and try to make it in there to see if I hear it land. Sure. Go ahead and make me a strength check of a DC eight just to see if you can throw that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First off, Easy. it's like six. What is that? Like 16 yards. Hopefully you can. Ooh, 14. 14. You take this rock and you chuck it down the hallway and go and then it goes right into the giant hole you see you bink off the mouth of the hole and it goes down and you hear <laughs> and the sound tails off you don't hear it hit anything on the way down guys there's a deep hole over there it's real deep 
Oh yeah? Not going that way. Don't go that way. Yeah, I don't see any reason why to. Nope. Okay, uh, if there's nothing interesting, yeah, let's move on. And I move past the stalactite. You do hear that same familiar voice by <laughs> I'm gonna hate myself for doing this. I reach into the pile of bones. Yeah, yeah you can see I'm not doing it. Oh, my oh God. look who it is, it's you guys again. Wait a minute, what do you mean again? You know, it's funny, they always stick my head on either a couple of bones. All right. That's it. Almost, pull, and I throw the skull into the air. <laughs> just completely Eldrick Blastic. Not with just one, but both bolts. <laughs> As I keep it uh, <laughs> spinning with the first one, and as it ricochets, I hit it with the other one. Hey, you blow this skull up. He goes, oh, look, we're going on a little trip. Oh, I can see everything over me. It falls. <laughs> Why, you guys really hate that guy. Uh, hey, you remember those bees that attacked you, Reginald? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was his trap. Oh. oh I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> okay, you guys move past the stalagmite. And you see another pathway that trails off to the right, and you see that the loop closes around the other edge of this poisonous pit that was to your left. Yeah, I mean, it takes a quick look. It's like, oh, yeah, glad we didn't go that way. <laughs> it just starts walking back. Towards. I go up to where the pile of bones were, and I'm kind of following Menace when I see something red. <laughs> down the hallway that really catches my eye. Guys, we gotta go that way. And I point down the north facing uh, what would you call it? Opening? Hallway? hallway? I, guess? I don't know. Yeah. What you, is this a really a hallway? A caveway. <laughs> caveway. Yeah. yeah. You look down the cave path and almost you do see something rather shiny. As you get, as you really try to hone in to see if you, you rub your eyes in disbelief, as it does look like a giant version of what you've been collecting. And through the darkness and the areas that you can't see, through the darkness, you see a large beast go past your sight. Ah! Ah! The, the long wait, they can't see this that? head and the long <laughs> neck. They can't see that? Attached to a very large body and its <laughs> tail trails <laughs> off. Oh, so there are more bees? <laughs> right through your view from one end of the room <laughs> to the other. Almost. <laughs> you guys hear the uh, trembling of footsteps from beyond the darkness, Drill and Minutes. That's so. Wait, they really can't see that? They really, they really can't, can't see that, you guys. That. So, oh in roll God, 20, so the three of you funny. have different vision. <laughs> yeah. They see everything in maroon color because that's the light the axe is giving off. <laughs> that was fucking wonderful. I love that moment <laughs> so fucking much. Wait, that doesn't sound like bees. The thumping <laughs> and rumbling of the cavern trail off. Oh, no, it's bad. We're going to die. Um, what? Uh, yeah. Um, Wait, did you see the wyvern? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Something enormous just slithered by. Hey, if you need to say a prayer, cast a spell, I feel like now is about the time. <laughs> I think it's time. Let's go wyvern hunting. And he pulls out his javelin. <laughs> Sid pulls out a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in. Fuck it. And Minus, yeah, Minus starts kind of jogging forward into this cave opening. You go forward and the path starts to ascend upwards. And as you, Minus and Jarrell, as you go up this path, it does cone out and along the dirt path to your right of the cave, you start to see some grass, similar color to what you've seen outside. And the grass has like grown over the dirt here and it looks very out of place to you, Menace, because you haven't seen where like grass should get sunlight and water and you haven't seen either of those two things while you were in this cave. Okay, this is a little weird. <laughs> Drell's gonna switch to his uh, giant slayer <laughs> instead of his axe. <laughs> and he's also going to, um, where is the food menu? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Oh my, gonna have oh a my hearty god, yeah, can we eat? Like, <laughs> can we like, just take a, take a bite of some chicken wings? <laughs> I'm gonna try to snack on some of my uh, my wings. Actually, no, I'm gonna scarf down the the cheesesteak, 
and then also <laughs> um, one of the Hydra kebabs. So you, in this moment, I'll let you eat one. What do you want to eat? Okay, then I'll eat. Then I'll eat the kebabs. Oh, we take a little food break. I'll, I'll eat my uh, garden bowl then. <laughs> Drell and Minus, you guys walk into the cave. Minus, out of fear, you guys are like, oh, I need a snack. As Armos gives you these <laughs> foreboding words. I could eat right Minus. now. <laughs> Minus, you eat your salad that you have packed away. You now have oh, advantage. So me, me, me. He starts nibbling on the salad. You have advantage on all checks and saving throws that require intelligence or wisdom. Huh. Nice. Drell, as you eat the kebab in fear, go ahead and roll me. It's not fear. It's a... Uh... You know, just had a great workout. Is hungry. <laughs> oh, you're replenishing, <laughs> huh? After our workout, Trying to keep yes. Up with my calories. You know. Go ahead and roll me your hit dice plus Constitution modifier. Uh, okay. I'm gonna do a barbarian one because that's a D4 or sorry D12. Don't yell at me. Sure. Um, and then what it, plus my con modifier? Yes. That's an eight total. Eight total. Go ahead and eight, add eight hit points to your total HP. This is a permanent stat buff. What? Oh, shit. Permanent? Permanent stat buff. It was Novo special. Limit one per Holy customer. Crap. So you guys, this is why I bought all this stuff. As you guys eat and change your weapons, Minus and Drell, Wait, you... What did mine do? He throws you back to chicken wings and... No, no, no. I gave him the Philly. I gave him the Philly. Oh, the... Yeah, whatever. Philly cheesesteak. Drell, as he was switching weapons and eating his kebab, he throws you the Dillmore cheesesteak. Go ahead and heal yourself for 1d20 HP. You metagaming bastards. <laughs> 15. As you guys eat your food and switch out your weapons, minutes you take out your javelin as Drell takes out his giant slayer. You see that the room opens up to the right and then you hear a deep breath from your left. Out from the shadows, bring it. You see a pair of blood red eyes that are massive. You also see this sharp grin smile poking its head out further from the darkness. You see a giant head of a green dragon, and it smiles at you and it starts to laugh as its mouth begins to fill up with this green smoke cloud. That probably can't be good. <laughs> Minus, you wanted to try to go see if you could talk to it? Yeah, wait a second. You're not a wyvern. Roll me initiative. <laughs> I love that you guys can't see it. Have you seen a wyvern around here? <laughs> uh, 11. 14. Oh my gosh. Why is my initiative rolls terrible? 11 as well. Roll off. I got a 13 on the second one, Drill. I got a three. All right, put me on 12, Tony. <laughs> we are going to start the initiative at initiative 16 as this green dragon reveals himself and he begins to laugh and snicker at you as it gives you a bigger, bigger toothy smile as this green smoke slowly falls from its mouth and goes... <laughs> And he blows a breath at you. I need everyone to make. Oh no! Everyone, make me a Constitution saving throw. Twenty-four. Twelve. Uh, Eighteen. Minus and Drell. Which way would you like to dodge as this cone of poisonous breath comes barreling at you towards the dragon? Can I like roll under the breath towards the dragon, if you like? <laughs> you can move half your movement speed in any direction from this as he's breathing this poisonous cloud at you. <laughs> uh, Good try, dragon. Yeah, and I'll probably just, I'm a little bit bigger, so I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just going to try to roll to the right. Um, so just, just like trying to flank the dragon. Armos, you are out of his, I didn't see where your piece was. Armos, you are just outside of his breath as he's breathing 30 feet in front of him. <laughs> Minus hey. uh, and Drell, you guys don't catch the heart, like the brunt of the hit, but seeing how you dodged into it, you are still going to take some damage here as your lungs fill up with this 
toxic gas. You take 17 points of poison damage and same to you, Drill. Ouch. He is going to laugh. He goes, <laughs> and he lets out a huge roar. He goes, and runs backwards. What? <laughs> into the darkness. Fucking coward. Almost go first. <laughs> We're gonna go to initiative 14. Hey, that's me. You got eyes, Armos. Uh, it kinda. I see his wig. He's <laughs> running away. Okay. I have questions. How tall is the ceiling? About 45, 50 feet, rough. You know, it's a cave. It's not solid. Okay. Some taller parts and some shorter How parts. How tall in comparison to the cave is the, the dragon? Uh, he fills up about half of it. He's a large dragon. So one would assume he can't really fly around in here. He more has to like. He could probably glide if he in some of the parts. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Can I? I'm gonna move up just slightly enough to be able to see the face of the the monstrosity, and then try to shoot Eldritch Blast at him. Absolutely. So as you go up the path using your movement, you can see down the hallway and the path he's gone, and he's. He is full sprinting into the darkness. You see that the blast he just hit Drell and Menace with, the ground is now colored green, similar to the grass behind you. So I'm gonna do my good old Eldritch Blast. So here's to hit a natural 20. That hits. Oh. Nice. Correct. So this is double whatever this damage is. Is that correct? No, two of the die. Okay. So I did 11 damage on the first one, and then 12 damage on the second one. And then I got a whole nother hit, and nine to hit on that one. <laughs> Good thing you crit. <laughs> right? So when he, when you hit him with the nine, you hit him in like his dragon carapace, and it just doesn't break it. Like you got him in like uh, your first hit, he kind of got in like the soft spot of his belly, maybe you're underneath his tail. The second shot like binks off his the outer shell of his body. That'll be it. We're good. That'll be the end of my turn. Okay. It's going to go to initiative 12. Come back here, dragon! <laughs> I start running towards the dragon, and I sprint in a straight line and hit him with my javelin. <laughs> okay. So you take your movement and you run towards the dragon. You can see that he is rather large, as but his back is to you. Go ahead and roll to hit. That's a 28. Oh, 28 hits. Wow. So again, since I took the dash action, uh, you can use a bonus action to make a melee weapon attack or shove a creature. I'm gonna take doing the weapon attack. If I move at least 10 feet in a straight line, I get uh, plus five bonus to the damage. So that is 13 as my swarm also hits for one point of damage. My God, they always hit for the worst damage. <laughs> for one. Plus one. <laughs> as I also mark it as my favorite foe for three points of damage. As you attack this thing with your javelin and send your swarm on it, it feels poking behind it and it turns and rears its head at you and gives you this large smile and it speaks and goes, oh, it's been a while since we had a brave one and he turns and faces you. That's right, it's time to tussle. <laughs> Come at me, dragon. We're gonna go to initiative 11. Drell, this is that great workout you were talking about. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it, dude. <laughs> Give him a <laughs> thumbs up. Um, and then I'll just fucking follow up Menace with, uh, with my, um, giant slayer. And then I'll just like run after him. Cool. Yeah, and then I'll just run up next to him and like kind of right where Minus was like trying to stab him with his javelin. I'm just gonna try to slice him like on his back side before he can turn around. So as he's turning around and speaks to Minus, you're coming up and slicing him. Uh Minus and Drell, as you guys approach him, he has run far enough down the hallway that when you look behind you, you see another small path. It looks like a tinier cave like off to your left it, that only like uh, you or like a smaller creature can fit into. Okay. Go ahead and roll to attack. That's a 26 to hit. That hits. 
Wow, fuck you guys. Right. You guys are taking your first dragon pretty well right now. Oh, and then <laughs> um, a bonus action going into a rage, by the way. Sure. Because why would I not? Why would you not? It's only a dragon. Why would you be mad? That's <laughs> 25 damage. All right, Minus, let's do this. And I just yell, mountaintop, as I fucking come in and fucking <laughs> try to sling my dragon slayer. And then um, I slice across him as he's, like, trying to talk to Minus, and then... I'm gonna take my second attack as well and try to hit him again. Oh, I forgot my second attack. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And that's another 26 to hit. Yo, we are swinging for the fucking moon on this. My goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 30, 30 damage on the second one. He's turning around to talk to Minish. You come, you come up and you get his attention with your attacks and he looks at you and you go ahead and as you uh, attack him on your second attack, he kind of gets up on his hind legs and you slash up his stomach and he roars in pain. And he goes <laughs> and slams his fist down onto the ground right in front of you. And now that he's on his like hind legs, like his towering presence, like this thing is fucking huge. So consider a large creature, but like he is staring down at you, getting ready. It's go, oh, is that the end of your turn? No. Okay. Um, Cause I, oh wait, it might be, uh, give me one sec. You moved and attacked twice. But I have this cool thing that allows me to take another turn. <gasps> um, and I'm going to action surge. Oh yeah. my God. Um, Go ahead and action surge. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's no, I'm just kidding. Um, that is a 14 to hit on the first one. That misses. Fuck. Ooh. He sees it coming, and as you go to slash, he like slaps your axe out of the way. And a 17 on the second one. He mi you miss again as you come up with no. another swing, and he what? slaps that one out of the way too, and he starts laughing Bro, at you. I always miss my axe in surges. <laughs> <Fuck It's like laughs> as this green drool starts to drip from his mouth and lands on the floor, and the floor starts to like sizzle a little bit. Uh, I move behind Menace. <laughs> it's going to go to initiative 16 which is the dragon and he starts to actually I lied it's going to go to initiative one mm. the dragon's breath begins to foam up again and fog oh. and he blows down at his feet and as he roars this fog starts to the fog breath starts to shift and shape as this small cloud dragon is revealed from his breath and you see a tiny version of himself but it's but it just looks like a green cloud what flashback you see a flashback as he's hearing the dwarf speak <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> the clouds will walk among us. Uh, what? Oh, there's nothing. Don't worry about it. The cloud dragon, the fog, the green fog dragon is like half the size of the dragon you're fighting right now. It's going to go to initiative 16 and these things are going to attack. The fog dragon is going to go first and is gonna go after Minus. Great choice. <laughs> I mean, no. You, he rushes towards you on all four of his cloud feet and occupies your space as he starts to slam you. He rolls a 15 as he tries to launch his fog claw towards you. <laughs> Duck. <laughs> you duck out of the way as he comes around with his second attack with a 20. <laughs> you missed. Uh. <laughs> yes. So he misses you with the first attack as he as you duck underneath and uppercuts you with the second one, dealing 12 points of damage as you get a little air on that hit. Now that you're in his space, he's like hit. You, you're like kind of breathing him in. He's standing right over you. Go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw. Oh, I sure will. Oh, baby. That's a 17. You pass. 
You take one point of damage as you're breathing in his toxic form. It's going to go to the dragon's turn. The dragon lunges side by side with his fog version of himself. And he's going to attack Drell. Getting slashed and beaten up, he's going to make three attacks. He lunges at you with a bite. Wow, you roll low. A 10. You dodge out of the way as he snaps next to you and comes around with two claw attacks. Ooh, a 13 and a nine. <laughs> he goes and you you dodge out of the way expertly as bad as he insulted you as you miss, you give it right back to him and he gets frustrated. He goes, he roars right in your face as he's missing these attacks. And then as nice. he's roaring, I'm going to burn a superiority die and um, parry him and try to counterattack him. Go for it. <laughs> you are beating the <laughs> shit out of this thing. Fuck. That's only a 16. Damn. That misses. You go to try to counterattack him, and as he's roaring, he just moves out of the way swiftly. He's going to end his turn by taking a movement as he jumps up and begins to glide over the ledge behind him, moving 80 feet. And as he fades into the darkness, you hear a splash of water. Coward. It's going to move to initiative 14. That's me. <laughs> I'm still here. Way back here. I see the monster kind of dip away. And as I do that, I kind of scan my perimeter just to see what's going on. And I notice that the red s rock that's sticking up pretty close to me out of the ground. Whoa. Whoa. Reginald's like at all. So... When you look over at the giant red crystal that's sticking out of the ground, it is up on a hill, and you see a lot of shiny objects up on that hill. Uh, you can't make out anything of what items or objects you see, but this red crystal is towering up halfway, and it's bursting through the floor halfway into the middle of the room. It is undeniably a giant blood ore vein. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I want to go smack it with my book. <laughs> okay, so I see the monster disappear into the water. Um, I kind of scan the area. I notice that there's a uh, that red crystal that was sitting up high, up on there, unguarded. And me and Reginald both look at each other and then sprint straight at it. And uh, I yeah, go yeah. all... Yeah. Go all, all the way up. You get to the top of this hill. The, the ore vein is bursting through the ground and it is about 15 feet taller than you. Around the shard, you see these chests filled with items. You see gold all around you. You just found the dragon's hoard, his nest. This is clearly where he's been staying. And you take out your tome and you get ready to smack the book as you feel this immense power, this aura coming from the book and the ore vein. You look back to see Drell and Minus where, where they were just fighting the dragon. Minus is currently in a sticky situation where he's breathing in this like fog dragon that this dragon left behind. It's his animated breath. You turn and look back at the ore vein. Reginald nods at you as he is seething and drooling from the mouth looking at this thing you look at your tome and the eyeball is re is revealed and he is staring at you and then stares at the tome and you haven't seen this thing more bloodshot in your entire life and at the base of it i take my book and i smack it you go ahead and you smack the book against the blood or vein and a flashing red light emits throughout the entire cave illuminating the cave for just a moment as all this energy swirls and swarms into your tome and you are holding it in place and you are feeling this adrenaline rush and Reginald's like this is what I'm talking about as his fur is being blown back his ears are being blown back your hair is being blown back your horns grow uh, to its fullest extent your horns antler out as the blood or vein starts to disappear and you see that it goes deeper and deeper and it does not seem to stop and that's where we're going to end this week's session. Oh. Uh -oh. Damn. Damn it. I love I love it.
I love it. Menace and Trell are out here fighting, <laughs> and Armos is just being greedy as fuck, like always. Armos oh. is greedy. You wait. My next turn, I was about to start looting some of that treasure. I'd be like, guys, guys, don't worry. I got some gold for you. That will that'll patch up your wounds, right? <laughs> I am so happy you did that because the next, it just, mm, next session is going to be even better. Oh, Woo. my. <laughs> what an episode, boys. Boys, we're going to talk about the shit out of it on the after show. We're going to what? <laughs> We're going to talk the shit out of it on the after show. Uh, okay. Yeah, talk, talk about everything that happened, bro. You know, we're going to talk it up. We're going to talk. We might even smooch. I'm just kidding. 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 We're, uh, <laughs> 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 what an episode. You guys had a crazy start. Really funny. You entered this giant lair, this cave lair, and came face to face with your first ever dragon. It's in the title of the game, but how are you guys not more pumped? It's in the title. Dungeons and Dragons. It's a dungeon and it's a dragon. Right. I mean, oh, you're in a cave. Right now, it's dungeon. caves and dragons. It's a cave and dragon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Guys, if you want to hear more about this session, especially this one in particular, you can go over and head. You can head over to the Patreon and you can listen to the after show. But before we close out this episode, guys, do you have anything you want to say before we go? Yo, uh, R.I.P. Choco Tacos. They're getting rid of them. So what? make sure. Yeah, they're discontinuing Choco Tacos. So make sure you guys uh, oh, man. get as many as you can before they're gone. Oh, you forever. feel bad about that? When's the last time you had a Choco Taco? I literally have one all the time when I go into the gas station. Uh, I mean, it's, when's the last like, time you had one, non-California uh, kid? I think two months ago. Bullshit. I, all right. I've never had one. Bro, it's hot as fuck out here, bro. You go to pump some gas and you just grab a Choco Taco. It's fucking great. I man. never I had didn't know one they ever. Didn't, yeah, I didn't know they existed you either. You didn't know Choco Tacos existed? I am a no. fat guy. If I didn't know they existed, no wonder why they're going it's under. It's literally an ice cream sandwich, <laughs> but the waffle cone is a taco and the no. toppings is just frozen like sandwiches. dark chocolate. I feel like they didn't do a great job marketing. So that's what are you talking failing. about? They're huge, dude. I, it they're must not, be a listen, West Coast no, no, no. thing. I'm I huge it. physically. If I haven't heard of a chocolate taco, it's not a good ice cream. It's not a chocolate it's a taco. It's a dessert. choco taco. <laughs> I will go out and have one, Google and I will let it. you, you know, know if it is, it's good Google or not. It. As a certified fat your guy, local gas station and certified fat. it's time to shout out our Patreon subscribers, starting with our Sigit College alumni. First is Ulrich Shield Dust. This blacksmith spent many sleepless nights helping Dilmore get back to working order after catastrophic events burned the city to the ground. Ulrich helped many citizens build their homes and forged many new tools for Dilmore's first responders. He was offered a position at the Red Guard, but turned it down as he is currently mourning over the death of his jazzy friend, Chet. That's sad. Next is Alara Dawnstar, a monk of the Astral Cranes of the Copper Mountains, who just took her first rest day in five years from her workout routine to go help the citizens of Dilmore in any way possible. Citizens were in awe as she hammered in nails with her fists. I heard she made friends with an enthusiastic blacksmith who told them tales of the Bloodshard Bandits. Artemis is new to the Sigic College crew. Uh, well, they don't go to the college, rather work security there. But congratulations on the new job. We'll see how long this one lasts as Artemis has been seen, you know, bouncing from job to job. <laughs> I heard they just broke up a fight in the mess hall after a halfling boy made fun of a goblin girl whose parents were lost recently in a card explosion. How tragic. Also new to the Sigic College alumni is Julius Kendrick. Not much is known about this man other than rumors connecting him to dangerous cults and black magic. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling about this new supporter. Next are Humbrea's heroes. We're going to start with Pascal Elliott, or Charcoal Darts as she's known as in the art community. Pascal took days off from her commission work to paint walls in the streets of Dilmore after hearing about what went down. Her art brought new life to the rebuilt version of the Knots. Children were enthralled by her magical moving paintings, and after a few extra days teaching their youth to paint, Pascal went back home to settle a copyright dispute after someone by the name of Just 
Inberger used her art without permission to advertise for their improv show. Now it is Man With Glass. Once a legendary glass blower, now infamous Rogue has been locked up for stealing hundreds of artificer's tools in Humbrea. Well, they were locked up before blowing a hole in the wall with a destructive potion that he had slipped by security. If you know where Man With Glass is, please contact the Red Guard with any and all information. Alex Judge Dredd was last seen brawling in the Kambuki fighting pits. He was kicked out, however, after jumping in the ring to beat up a contestant who was fighting dirty. Witnesses report Dredd shouting things like, You have fought your last battle, and How do you like getting sand in your eyes? After pile driving the poor guy into the ground. Yikes. <laughs> Joshua Weaver was indeed imprisoned after stealing tons and tons of wool north of the border, but was recently released. See, last time I thought it was one of the other, it's actually both. Apparently, after seeing the bag Josh made with all the wool that he stole, Lord Baron was so impressed, he hired Joshua on the spot to work in his labs. I wonder what kind of magical bags he's working on now. But anyways, that's all for this week's supporters. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, that would be patreon.com slash dnd404. There are lots of fun little perks you get, and it really is the best way to help our podcast because it goes to the editing cost, and that's about it. <laughs> None of it has gone back to us, but that's okay because it helps us do what we love. That's all for today. <laughs>